Welcome to the MLB Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from out here on the West Coast, Josh Lander. And I am Ryan Solo once more looking at a Wednesday slate of baseball here. Quickly running through how we did on Tuesday night. Very well, I will say so myself. 3-0, and up .91 units on the night. Had a push there in that Baltimore at Toronto game as well. That would have been really nice if Baltimore could have avoided giving up another couple runs in the fifth. We would have had a nice little money line bet there, at even money, for them to take the first five. But Toronto ties them up, so it's a push on that one. But we got Brian Bello over 17 and a half outs. Houston at Cleveland. Houston won that one. And Tampa Bay handled the Yankees once more. So continue to follow along, like, and subscribe, bringing you these videos each and every weekday of this regular season. We'll be joined by Nate Weitzer next week as we'll get back on the show together here. Also want to remind you to head to thelines.com check out all the great content on the site these days and use that odds finder tool that we have up there make sure you're getting the best odds available to you from these books giving us bets this baseball season so let's jump right into this slate I got a couple picks here for you but I'm actually going to start with a future because we just had the trade deadline and I think it's important to at least mention that a bunch of these teams especially in the AL got a lot better uh, and it's time to kind of see how they stand right now. Uh, and where I'm looking right now is the Houston Astros. Take t- Say what you want about it. Uh, Homer pick in, the ter- in terms of picking the, the defending champs once more. But really, the only thing that I thought that they needed because of the fact that they've had so much offense coming back, mainly Altuve uh, and, and Alvarez, as we know, coming back for the Strohs, which has just completely helped their offense in the last like three or four games, even though they didn't score that many against the Guardians last night um, because they had an awesome start from Andrew Heaney. I just like everything that, I, that we're getting from them right now. Uh, if Heaney's going to pitch like that, good, good luck to, to the Astros' opponents, especially now that they have Justin Verlander back in tow. So I'm taking the Houston Astros to win the AL West. You can still get that at minus 125. I'm taking them to win the AL pennant. And you can get that at about plus 350. And I'm, I'm going to put a little bit on them to win the World Series at this point because I feel so confident that they're going to get to the, that they're going to win the pennant and get to the World Series once more. That if they're there and they're at plus 700, which is where you can still get their World Series odds right now, I'm going to feel really good about having them 7 to 1 against probably the Braves at that point. I mean, I'm not saying they're better than the Braves, but I won't be able to get 7 to 1 on my money for them to win the series outright at, before it starts after right now, right? As the closer we get to the World Series, the, the lower their odds are going to drop. So I, I, but I, with the amount of confidence that I have that they're headed back to the World Series, might as well sprinkle a little on the 7-1 to one so I have it when they get there. Now moving on to a couple of picks for today, and I'm starting back at that Phillies and Marlins series. And I'm going right back to the Phillies. I I'm, I'm guess they're going to sweep this series uh, because of the fact that they just took two, the first two there. They were losing one nothing last night on Tuesday and managed to come back, pull off three runs there against new closer David Robertson, who just went over from the Mets. You guys are welcome for that. Enjoy David Robertson, who's been way overused this year. Um, but that's another reason why I like the Phillies uh, on, the, on the entire money line. And you can also take the first five, I should say. Um, in fact, I actually preferred the first five I should be very clear about that Phillies first five money line I know Jack has that on the screen for us thank you as always Jack uh, minus 122 on DraftKings for the Phillies to be winning at the end of five innings let's ride Zach Wheeler uh, I would love to ride his K's and in innings again they're really high uh, per usual and this this Marlins team just doesn't strike out is the problem with taking uh, Zach Wheeler K's I like the first five because I still like him over Braxton Garrett who has been good. Like, let's be very clear. Braxton Garrett's been good, especially over his last, like, three or four starts. Um, But the Marlins hitting is not good. It's been awful, especially since the All-Star break uh, in their last 16 games. Just a tad over three runs per game. Not going to get it done. They just picked up Jake Berger and Josh Bell. That's 36 homers combined between the two of them. Uh, Most of those coming from Berger. We should be very clear. 25 of them from Berger. Um, But that's really not enough, in my opinion. Look, Jorge Soler... Obviously, we know what he can do with power, and he does have good numbers against Zach Wheeler in his career, but nobody else really does for this team, uh, and they really rely on getting on base a lot with that lack of power. I don't know if we'll see Berger or Bell in this game yet, but uh, I do think that even if they are there, getting them getting used to this this team and everything, I, I'm, not, I'm not worried about them putting up offense on Wheeler here, who has only given up one run in his la- 
last three starts and has been an absolute monster. He's got the best FIP in the league, and he's always had the best FIP in the league, to be honest. Like, it's been at the top or the best for most of the season, even when he was struggling a little bit uh, throughout various points. But he's steady, man, and, and he's going to continue to be steady. Uh, like I said, with the, in the last three games, uh, just one run, uh, 13 and two-thirds in his last two, and just uh, eight hits in those last two as well. Striking out 19 batters, by the way, in his last two games on the strength of 11 the last time he was out there against the Pirates. So love Zach Wheeler. Don't really want to have to bet on him directly tonight to get those Ks with the way that Miami is a very slap happy team that gets on base and likes to move around the bases with speed. So I'd rather just have the Phillies winning this one after five in the first five money line minus 122. And I'm going to end it by fading. No, I'm not really fading the Yankees again. I'm actually riding with these pitchers. I think we're getting a little bit of value because people are looking at McClanahan and Garrett Cole in this Tampa Bay game and thinking that they've had a few regressions uh, here and there for sure. I mean, especially McClanahan over the last few starts, he was kind of bad a couple months ago and he's been kind of worse over July. I'm going to predict a bit of a turnaround from him in the form of Tampa Bay at New York under eight runs total in this game. And if you can get it at eight still, by all means, it's seven and a half. You lose that little hook there. Not sure if you want to play that because I do think eight is is sort of the ceiling according to the projections that I have for this game. And I mean, Cole, say what you want. Like his strikeout numbers are a little bit down, uh, roughly like 5% from, from what it's been where he's just been mowing guys down in the past. But he's not giving up home runs, and he's going deep into the game. Uh, and if that's going to be the case for him once more, then I feel good about him keeping this thing under eight runs. Uh, Carlos Rodon was not able to keep the the Tampa Bay Rays under five runs yesterday, and they that still that game still ended at seven because of how bad this Yankees offense has been. So with Cole going at least six innings in ten of his last eleven games, the K rate in the last five is. At 25%, which is really good if you're not Garrett Cole, by the way. We just expect him a little bit closer to 30% on the K rate, which is also where we would expect McClanahan to be more often uh, this season. But in the last six starts for him, he's gotten roughed up for sure. Well, I should say four of the last five specifically because he did have one good start against Texas where he only gave up two and Cade six. So if he can do that kind of thing here with another uh, offense that it's a power offense and it, it, it can strike out. Um, it's been pretty good. The the Yankees offense in terms of not striking out against lefties, but I still think that McClanahan, if he's avoiding giving up the long ball, then he should be in a good position uh, to be able to limit the Yankees team and go six once more uh, and then continue to, to, be able to handle this Yankees team with that Tampa Bay bullpen and the Yankees bullpen also very good right now at all season. Uh, and, and as a result, you can feel pretty good about them. Even once, uh, you know, you get Cole out of the game, which I expect him to go seven, but even once you get him out seven, two innings from a really good bullpen feels like they can at least keep the, the, the run total low as well. So under eight runs in this one, and that is all the time I have for you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along, bringing you these videos each and every weekday. As we mentioned, we'll be seeing Nate next Monday. So until I see you next, happy betting. Step it up, step it up.